Hey gang, Charles with PremierGuitar.com, uh, LA Amp Show 2011. I'm here with Dan from 65 How Amps. Are you, Charles? I'm just Dandy, thank you. you and uh, Dan's going to tell us about something, well, it's a prototype, really. We're, yeah. we're lucky enough to be taking a look at a prototype, you all at home. And uh, let us know, uh, what, is this, what is this thing all about? Well, first off, thanks for coming, Charles. It's always good to see you guys. Yeah. Um, this is uh, it's a new kind of amp design that we're working on and we've been working on for a little while. It's actually a pair of EL34s, but we're running them in a very unconventional way so that they will run safely and reliably. And uh, we just got tired of designing amps around tubes that blow up all the time. So we're running these uh, in a technical way I can explain to you later, but basically the power tubes are going to last you about 25 years in this thing. And I worked with Sergio um, at Mercury Magnetics quite a bit. And we came up with a transformer set that will do what I've been sort of fantasizing about doing. And it's EL34s. EL34s always kind of have two drawbacks in the real world, one of which is they're, they're way too loud. Nobody plays that loud anymore. Um, and then also, the clean sound's always sort of lacking on those. So we kind of wanted to overcome both of those. So the output of this amp it, is only 28 watts. Uh, it does have our master voltage, so you can drop it down, you know, still get full vocabulary. But the amp has uh, four voices. So I've got a clean, a sort of heated up clean on the second channel. I've got sort of the medium gain thing that 65 is pretty known for. And then a higher gain EL34 sound. So getting a good distortion sound out of an EL34 is not much of a hat trick. You know, everyone does that pretty well. But getting a clean sound out of it at a reasonable volume was the challenge. And so we really kind of found it, I think. We were extremely happy with it. I had a bunch of friends bring over all of their amps that I can't say their name that have black paint on the panel um, uh, for comparison. And we ended up winning. You know, I had a bunch of guys with a lot of, I'll just call them Al Jolson amps, you know, because he worked in blackface. Um, so a lot of guys brought their Al Jolson amps over. And um, for comparison as a reference piece, until I, we worked on it until finally guy said, okay, I like this better. <laughs> you know? So well, I'll give you congratula a Congratulations on your victory. Oh, thanks. Oh, victory is a big word. We just have a lot of fun, you know. I'm, I don't know if I've told you guys before, I'm intentionally ignorant. Like, I don't even read magazines, I'm sorry. Um, Neither do other, I. Other, other, yeah, <laughs> good, good, good call. Um, but other than when you guys do a nice review for us, which I always appreciate, Premier Guitars always treats us extremely well. And, um, but we just sit in a cave and make stuff that we like. And so Peter and I have both fantasized about, you know, real EL34 distortion at a practical volume uh, without a master volume because both of us are allergic to master volume. So. Likewise. Well, you want to show us what the clean sounds like or let us hear what the clean sounds like? That seems to be the real feature of this amp. Playing, it's a custom shop Strat. I have Lawler's Dirty Blondes in it. Um, other than that, it's stock. Uh, well, that's not true. I had it refretted. Michael DeTemple put some frets on it for me. But other than that, it's just a straight-up Fender guitar. Uh, pickups are kind of medium output, they're not super hot, but... And um, I can get some very nice classic American Strat sounds, you know. in his hotel room. And so you can hit the bump on the side and get sort of more classic American distortion out of it, you know. So Dan, uh, were you consciously trying to bridge um, the difference or bridge the gap between an American sound and an English sound? Yeah. On? Well, it's really you know, a lot of ex the desires that I have and that Peter have come from you know playing for a living. I played for a living for about 12 years, and Peter's been doing it well, since uh, 1980. Right. You know, so between the two of us, we got 40 odd years of road experience, and. Uh, I'm tired of taking out different amps for different stuff or having to take two amps out on a gig. I want one grab-and-go box. 
where I have what I consider to be, you know, the American vocabulary that I want, and then the British vocabulary that I want. I don't like taking an American amp and putting pedals in front of it and trying to make it sound British, and I have a hard time getting that extra sweet spank out of a British amp. Um, and the way that everybody has ran amps for 50 years, it just prohibits that. So the way we're doing this now is, you know, a lot of current, but not a lot of voltage. But the way that the transformers are designed to deliver the current, the tubes are just drinking rich jet fuel. And it makes them really, really robust, and I can ask them to do anything now, which when you're running stuff at high voltage with low current, which is the way everybody runs amps, or, including myself, all of our other amps do that too, it just limits your options. Yeah. So here I've got, you know, that's why we're jokingly calling it the producer. It's the guy that makes everything happen. So I, we've been playing at the shop, you know, I, I, you guys have been to our shop, you know, we have a PA and a drum set, and, and I can grab any guitar and get any sound I want out of it. I can go from full-on raunch metal to Nashville clean, like we're doing here, in one box. And instead you, of buying four boutique amps, that's okay. Instead of buying four boutique amps, I can just grab one and go. You know, we've got, you know, good sort of traditional... vocabulary but then get over on this side we get very British Even with my out-of-tune guitar and I can take it even higher it down, go back over to the good sort of American distortion there, back where we were with that thing, and then take it down even further. Does not sound like a British amp. Oh, no. uh, what's... What's more, I'm, no, that's cool. I'm kind of a, you know, I'm imagining this on a stage too. Mm -hmm. And although it's very difficult to perceive in a hotel room, I'm hearing this, uh, it sort of lives in a real sweet spot volume wise. Yeah, well right now, thank you. I mean, I have the voltage, even though the knob doesn't look like it's on 10, that's as, about as high as we're gonna run it. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I can take it, we you know call this the lead singer knob. Mm -hmm. You can bring it down until the lead singer right. quits giving you the stink eye and still get the same tone, you know? <laughs> Five-ish kind of watts. That's not hard to do, right? Quiet distortion. Quiet clean's hard to do. So that's been the hat trick for us, is how do you get it all? A whole lot of tricks in this thing, huh? A lot of, yeah, well, I always get made fun of for using the word vocabulary all the time. But um, it has a lot of vocabulary. Who needs words? Yeah, words. Words are for educated people. Um, Anti-intelligence, actually. Yeah, it does good. Yeah, we're going to start taking deposits on it now. We're going to deliver, hopefully, uh, well, not hopefully, we will deliver by Thanksgiving. Congratulations Thank on the uh, successful birth. we got to take care of some business, though. Okay, this a ritual. Little, one little sneak peek, though. Oh, please. And this is for next year. And, oh, sick. And only share it with people who come to your website. Well, okay, and people who have email accounts. Okay, well, maybe people that, like, buy the Mac. But you know what I'm saying? Just keep it inside the family. Sure. Uh -oh. I know nothing. I know nothing at all. A joke from Dan. So a guy walks into a music store, goes up to the counter, and goes, ho, 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 ho. And the guy behind the counter says, four string or five string? <laughs> As we try to expand our bass coverage, let's say people want to explore the possibilities of 65 amps further. Yes. Where should they go to, like, 
do uh, that? Well, you know, there's 65amps.com. It's a great question. I actually would never thought of that. Um, <laughs> that's so good. If you were a tree, what kind would you be? Um, 65amps.com, all of our dealers are on there. <clears throat> we sell, we have dealers all over the world. Um, so wherever you are, we can get one to you. And uh, we're here in L.A., in North Hollywood. And you can always get a hold of me, Dan, at 65amps.com. I'm on Facebook as Dan Bull and as 65amps. Uh, you can catch my weekly web show, which you guys are on all the time, which is on Ustream every Wednesday at 12 o'clock Pacific time. So I'll be playing amps, and there's a chat window. You can come in live and ask me questions like, hey, dude, pick up a tilly and play neck position, you know. Okay, I'll do that. So we try to find that a little more interesting than the standard, hi, my name's Steve, I'm going to play Les Paul. You know, it's like we want to actually interact and let you guys tell me what you want and ask me questions and, you know, all those sorts of things. So that's every Wednesday at noon. And all those sh previous shows are actually recorded. If you go to Ustream and search under my name, you'll see them all there. So. Sweet. Everything, everything but knocking on your door. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I'm not calling myself a whore, because that would be inappropriate. But um, and even then, I guess you'd have a warm cup of tea waiting, right? <laughs> this Dan's a nice guy. We're going to sign off Thanks, Charles. from the LA Amp Show 2011 for Dan. This is Charles for PremierGuitar.com.